Hey everyone, what's up? This is Simon from the Ionic Academy. In this video, we will take a look at how we can implement a better logging mechanism inside our Ionic or in general Angular apps. And for this, we will use a package called ngx logger that helps to define or use different log levels and even send those messages to a remote server. So pretty awesome package, super easy to integrate. Also, sorry for all those um, strange effects here. The good thing is this video is about code, so let's dive into it. I've created a blank new Ionic 4 application. Um, it's currently using a beta version, but that's not really a big problem. So then we go ahead and install the ngx logger package, which we will use. And um, maybe we can already go ahead inside our app module where we need to import the ngx. Um, uh, no, of course not. But the logger module from um, ngx logger. And on the documentation page, there's a bit different setup than we use. So basically what we need to do is say logger module for root and pass in some configuration. And in the example, the configuration is made right here. But I really like to embrace the environment of our app a bit more. So you can go to the environment or the environment for the production, which is used if you make a production build and simply add a new entry and let's call this logging. And in here we put all the values that we should have uh, for our logger. So this is level, ngx logger level. We might need to import this. Um, so that's the standard level. And then you can also define a server log level, ngx logger level. Um, and this is used for automatically sending the log files to a server in the background. So we can define another entry right here, server logging URL. And if we set the level to error and use a debug or information log, nothing will happen. We will just see it in the log. But if we use um, something above this level, it will automatically be sent to the server because we've defined it in here and that's the endpoint we're going to use. Um, I've actually um, used a service called bceptor where I've set up a little endpoint. Uh, let me show it. I've just called it slash logs. Um, I just respond with a message of OK so we don't have any errors. Application JSON. Uh, you can do the same if you want to. And then simply copy the URL from here, slash logs. Um, and then we will see the post message in here without the need to uh, have a server right now. So our environment is defined and you could do the same or a bit different for the production environment. Uh, maybe this might already be the production environment. So just change it like you need it. And then go ahead and import the environment and make sure that you're just importing the standard environment in here and then use logging. So now we've set up our logger module for root and passed in the information from our environment. So perfect setup. Um, that's actually already the most uh, interesting part. The next thing is to go to your homepage and add a bunch of buttons. So let's call this Ionic Logging. We got, I think, five buttons. They will call a log function that will trigger different log statements. So let's go to our home page and implement this log function. And also we might need a constructor in here. Still not sure why it's not created for this file. Anyway, um, go ahead and import your ngx logger. And that's also the way you're going to import it in all of your files. So we see it in one file. And yes, um, it's easier to just use console log all the time. But if you have a background in Java or whatever, if you use Node.js, there are all kinds of logging tools that streamline the logging process a bit more. So you write to a file or you have defined colors, you have defined log levels. And all of this is a bit 
um, better and more structured. So try to bring um, those qualities to your Ionic app because we can do it. So just import the ng logger where you need it. And then in our case, um, let me bring in the code because um, it's not that special, even a bit boring perhaps. So in the background, I'll already call Ionic serve. Um, our HTML was calling the log function with 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, I think. So we're gonna just switch the level in here for our testing case and use the different functions. So debug, information log, and log. Those are pretty the same, or they have the same color. So I think it's almost the same. Um, and let's bring this in here. Perhaps we could even have it side by side so uh, we can then see our server log. And of course we might need the console. So warning and error are still the same. I think there's not much else we can do. Um, well, we could get a config snapshot. Uh, we could use custom HTTP headers if we have some problems with the API or need to send specific information. Perhaps the version of the application might make sense. Uh, we could update the config trace and register monitor. You can read this on the page of the logger, but in general, that's all you need for now and to improve the logging inside your app. All right, so here we go. Um, we see log debug, let's start. And we see the debug is actually a lot prettier than you would know uh, with console log. So we got a little color defined and we can actually distinguish between different log levels pretty easy based on the color. Um, we got the timestamp and the key for that log level. So as I said, log and info look pretty much the same. I'm not completely sure what's the difference. So log warning is a bit more interesting. Um, we see we get this warning message you might uh, have seen before with different ionic parts perhaps. And still we haven't seen a request to our B scepter. So let's go with our log error. And now we see this error log that we usually don't want to see in our application. So be really careful when you use this log. Um, only use it in really, really error situations. Um, but the interesting thing is now automatically in the background, the request was sent to the API we have defined. And we see the request body looks like this message. Now we got a problem. Uh, additional level five timestamp. I file name, line number, is this correct? Um, well, well, not completely. Um, it might be inside the source map, so that's a bit tricky still. So um, remote logging with JavaScript is always a bit tricky. There are services. Um, the Ionic Pro service is great for using remote logging, um, where your logs are automatically sent and you can also see in which line the error happened if you upload the source maps. Um, this is a bit easier to integrate and use if you don't really need the uh, line numbers, perhaps if the file, num file name is enough or the general problem is enough for your case. Um, especially if you don't have any remote logging, starting with this is pretty simple. Just implement a root on your API for the logs, uh, use the ngx logger package and then you're good to go. So I hope you enjoyed this video. It was a pretty short video today, but uh, still the information is valuable, especially for bigger projects in the enterprise context. Uh, logging is a very important part of building a great application and architecture. So make sure to implement this logger in your next Ionic app. And of course, make sure to subscribe to my channel and also check out the ionicacademy.com, which is my own online school to help you learn Ionic in the best and fastest possible way. So I'll see you there and of course inside the next video. So have a great day and take care.